Welcome to the Emerging Civil War Podcast. I'm Chris Mikowski, and joining me today is my friend Ben Kemp, the Operations Manager of Grant Cottage in upstate New York. Ben, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me, Chris. Now, I've got to tell folks, Grant Cottage is one of my all-time favorite Civil War-related sites, presidential-related sites, uh, and I get the chance to visit a lot of folks, a lot of places, but Grant Cottage is just something special. And you have some pretty cool news to share with us today. Yeah, we, um, our organization took over operating the New York State Historic Site that is Grant Cottage uh, in the late 1980s uh, to keep it from closing. And I think it's always been a dream of the organization to see the preservation and protection um, move forward. Uh, on the property. And, and that's always been one of our top concerns. Uh, we obviously operate the site, but we want to see it uh, stay around as long as it, <clears throat> as it can. And of course, it takes a lot of money and a lot of support and a lot of exposure for people to know that you're there. And the way to do that is to receive, you know, uh, different levels of protection and preservation. Uh, and the first level that uh, Grant Cottage received um, was really actually in the 1880s. Um, the original owner left the cottage as uh, a memorial. Uh, the state and federal governments did not take on the responsibility though of, of caring for Grant Cottage. It was a combination of a private memorial association that was partially funded by the Grand Army of the Public, the Civil War veterans themselves. In fact, the first caretaker was a Civil War veteran, a survivor of Andersonville and his wife. Uh, in the uh, 1880s. And so a series of private caretakers took care of the place for 100 years. Eventually, the state would take ownership in the middle of the 20th century. And in the 1970s, it was placed on the National Register of Historic Places. That's where preservation really begins, is the National Register. Um, <clears throat> it, it shows that it has some level of historic significance. They can be, you know, that can be private homes, that can be, um, you know, privately owned. Uh, building structures. Um, so that's the basic level of, of preservation. The next level up um, on a national level is national uh, landmark status, na national historic landmark status. Um, and that's not to be confused with the, uh, the third level, which is national historic site. Uh, also other goes by other names, national battlefields, national monuments. Those are within the National Parks Service. That's a, a, a you know, that national, that's national park status. So that's uh, a, the higher level. That's about 420 uh, sites in America. But when you're at National Landmark, the one below it, there's about 2,500 sites, I believe. And so it's still very, uh, you know, a very important um, uh, distinction. Uh, to earn. And, um, you know, it means that you are recognized as having, uh, your site has national significance. Uh, it, it, it's illustrative of U.S. heritage in some way. Um, and you have to prove that. You do have to apply for it. Uh, and it has to go through a committee. So the exciting news, to make a long story long, uh, the exciting news is that Grant, um, the Friends of Grant Cottage, along with the owners, the New York State Parks and Historic Preservation, did apply uh, about three and a half, four years ago for national landmark status for Grant Cottage. And uh, it was a long wait, uh, but it finally went to committee. And the committee has unanimously uh, uh, recommended our site uh, for national landmark status. So that means that um, it's just one small signature by the Secretary of the Interior away from formally becoming a national uh, historic landmark, which again, it's, a, it's about a 30 year dream for, for our organization to see that happen. And it, and it opens up the site to federal funding and obviously increased uh, attention uh, and, and preservation, uh, different kinds of preservation um, measures that, that can be taken. Congratulations. That's fantastic news. Um, now, we've been talking about Grant Cottages, though. I'm assuming everybody knows what Grant Cottage is. But for those who are uninitiated, initiated, um, Grant Cottage is the location where Ulysses S. Grant finished writing his memoirs and then just a couple days later 
passed away into eternity uh, and uh, Im immortality, I would say. Um, so tell me, what, what is it about Grant Cottage um, from your perspective that makes it such a cool place to be? Well, I was immediately attracted by not only the location, it's a beautiful mountaintop on the edge of the Adirondack Mountains in upstate New York uh, with a beautiful view nearby of the Hudson Valley, just a short walk from the cottage itself. And so the setting is, is, is beautiful and, and historically interesting. Uh, many things happen on the mountain. So there was, <clears throat> so the actual, you know, history of, of the mountain itself, the setting is very interesting and beautiful. But the story is what really drew me in. The, uh, the absolute devotion that Grant had for his family, um, I think really displayed the uh, true depth of character that the man had in, in other aspects of his life, whether it be the military or his political life. You know, he had a depth of character that's really displayed uh, in, in his final push to the end to finish his book uh, for the sake of his family. And I think that's the story that really grabs you. That's the story we tell there. And I think that's why the place is worth preserving. Um, but it also gives us a chance to, to discuss other aspects of his life and career uh, and really highlight the importance of his memoirs that he finished there uh, because those were a you know, are to this day still, a, you know, very widely read um, and widely appreciated, uh, you know, work of American literature. So I think that's really where the considerate, one of the biggest con considerations for national landmark, uh, historic landmark status was, was Grant, you know, working on and finishing his memoirs at the location and that being such a huge part of American literature, uh, but certainly his, him as a figure, obviously he, he's got national significance. His life, you know, touched every American in some way. And, um, you know, what he, you know, what he did in the Civil War, what he did as, as, uh, as President of the United States. It, it, it you know, uh, again, it may seem like a very short period of time. Unfortunately, he was dying of throat cancer. So he only survived uh, less than two months at the cottage in the summer of 1885. Um, but the story uh, is, is what we tell, the story of the end of his life, the final chapter, uh, and how he sacrificed the end of his life for his family. So that's, that's what really drew me, the story, the setting. Um, so that's just a, a wonderful, uh, you know, wonderfully historic and naturally beautiful setting. And I think uh, I would obviously encourage everyone to come and come and see it in any season. It's and this has got to be a beautiful time to, to show up there with the leaves changing and just a, a couple weeks left in the season. I know that um, you guys are uh, usually close up at Columbus Day, but you have extended the season this year. Tell me about that. Yeah, well, uh, as you can imagine, it's been a, uh, a different year. Um, we've had our challenges, um, but I'm proud to say that I work for a small, you know, but dedicated and passionate nonprofit group. Uh, the Friends of Grant Cottage that uh, have operated the site for the last 30 years. And when we found out there was going to be a, a possibility of us opening with other museums deciding to close around us, we made the decision to forge ahead and, you know, create a situation that was as safe as possible for everyone within the guidelines. And we even went above the guidelines in, in quite a few instances uh, to provide a safe experience for, for the visitor. And, and certainly it took a lot of work, um, it, but I'm proud to say that we were the first New York State Historic Site to open to the public. Um, and we opened on July 3rd. And we have had a tremendous response. The, the volunteers in our organization, they, you know, they've given a tremendous amount of, of time, over 1,200 hours this, this season already. Uh, we, we've conducted over 900 tours um, we're limited capacity, so smaller groups, but they're getting a, you know, really intimate experience. Um, you know, we can't have any more than four people in the house at a time. So it's, it's, it's another, it's a, it's a totally different year, but we're, we're thrilled that people, we were, ba we were basically able to give people a, a really meaningful experience within, you know, a, a very difficult year. Um, something that people can, can do in rel relative safety. And, um, and I think, 
that's something that people responded to. We, we, our visitation has been tremendous. We, we booked out uh, every week during the summer, we booked out solid 60 tours a week uh, through the internet. So it's, it's, you know, it's, it's been a tremendous response, um, you know, from, from both visitors and the staff has, has put in a lot of effort this year. And it's really paid off. We've, we've, we've had a tremendous season. Uh, people have been very generous. Um, you know, a lot of new memberships uh, to help support us. Uh, and, and so that's, you know, again, that's what makes it worthwhile for me is if I, I can maintain a healthy staff, volunteers, um, and visitors, that's, that's the main thing. And then if we can, you know, if we can gain some support and, um, you know, draw in some revenue to help, you know, keep the place going, that's, that's what we look to do. Now, opening up at the beginning of July, uh, just in time for the victory Vicksburg, I should say. Um, really important because, of course, Grant dies on July 23rd, so you were able to, to be open in time to commemorate his death, and you guys always do a wonderful job with the uh, the commemoration and memorialization of that. Um, but particularly with the uh, Grant miniseries and the History Channel, um, there must have been a lot of interest in Grant as a historical figure, so being open must have allowed you to take advantage of that, I assume. Yeah, of course, we, we had huge plans for the 2020 season, and some of them had to be put on the back burner. Uh, we were going to have a huge grand reopening. Uh, we did get some new displays ready and some new things um, in place, a new introduction video in the visitor center. So we did put some of those things in place. We weren't able to complete it. So we're kind of planning a big, big shindig for in the spring. But at this point, uh, yeah, we were able to get it to the point where we were able to, you know, open and... Um, there's no question. I mean, I would probably put it somewhere between 80 and 90% of visitors mentioned the documentary. Um, and none of them recognized me. No, I'm just kidding. A few did. <laughs> I only had, I only had a few little, little, little segments in there. Um, <clears throat> as you know, they didn't, they didn't get into the, the Grant family that much uh, in the documentary. So that was most of the material that I had given uh, uh, the production company. But I think they did a good job. It, it certainly, um, overall, obviously there's nitpicks, but the, the idea is that it got a lot of people interested in, in Grant and his life. And it gave them, it gave a lot of people better, a much better perspective than the old tropes that we all know uh, about Grant. That's mostly what people get is these little sn snippets of, of you know, uh, myths and, and misconceptions about him and his life. Um, and so this gave a better perspective. And then they were brought to Grant Cottage and were able to learn that other side of Grant, the personal side and the family side that wasn't uh, as evident in the, in the documentary. So we're really, you know, kind of filling in the, you know, the blank there. Um, but yeah, there's no question that drew a tremendous amount of people. Um, and you had mentioned programming. We usually do a Remembrance Day in late July, close to the day that he died, around around the time he died, and then and then he was there for a while before he August eighth when they had the funeral in New York City, and and placed him in the tomb. So this year we we decided that our programming would be virtual. So our programming uh, we 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 uh, pre-recorded our programming and including. Um, pre-recording the reenactors for Remembrance Day. Now, if anybody's interested in seeing any of that content, it's all available on our website, grantcottage.org. Uh, and it's also available on our YouTube channel um, as well. So, so those programs, we had about eight programs that we, we were able to pre-record and, and uh, all but one has been released so far for this season. So I encourage people to check those out. All different subjects, not just Civil War. I have to warn you, it's not just Civil War. <laughs> um, we, do, we do talk about other things up there. Um, but, um, but yeah, so, so I would encourage people to check those videos out. And, um, and yeah, it, it, was, it, was a, it was a lot of pivoting. It was a lot of change, you know, adjusting to the circumstances this season. But um, it, really, it really paid off. It was, it was great. People, people had great experiences, lots of great reviews, and uh, that's what we like to hear. We, we like to get good, positive feedback um, and give people a meaning, meaningful experience, and they can learn something a little more about this, you know, supposedly grizzled, tough guy general from the Civil War that was uh, stone face, and uh, you learn so much about him, you know, that, that, you know, that, that he's just, he's got a sense of humor, he's sensitive, 
you know, he's a caring man. Um, but more than anything, he's, he's an absolutely devoted father and husband and grandfather. And uh, I think that's, that's what makes the place special. That's really what drew me to the story when I wrote my book, Grant's Last Battle. You know, here we've got a man who many of us know as, you know, the, the guy who won the war, as, as a president of the United States. He's kind of one of those marble figures of American history. Um, and then he writes this monumental work of, of nonfiction. Um, but the whole thing that drives that story is his personal devotion to his family and, and how dedicated he was. I mean, one of the things I love is about the guy is he's just mad about his wife. He's just crazy about her. Uh, and, and so to dig beyond that marble facade and get into who this man was and, and all these things he does, you know, he does to provide for his family at the end. And, uh, you know, that's just an incredible um, humanizing experience, I think. Yeah, and I, I think that's what I struggle with as, as a public historian. I just did a, um, I just uh, did a segment for a, a class at uni for the University of Albany, um, a virtual class, obviously, where they were talking, you know, we were talking a bit about what it means to be a public historian. And, and um, you know, for me, for, you know, understanding what it really means and what your purpose really is, I think, you know, People work in different facets of public history, but I think in a place like Grant Cottage, I think when you see when you see people take something meaningful away that they can, you know, that's relevant to their lives that day, you know, or or it, it, it gives them an experience that they would have never they wouldn't have had, you know, maybe they we get people that come in and they you know, they're reminded of a, a family member or even themselves who, who struggled with cancer, maybe even throat cancer, uh, like Grant did. And, and it's an emotional experience. Um, maybe, you know, maybe somebody uh, stood at the bedside of their loved one when they passed away, and that's something that, that touches them at that moment or they recall. Um, so I've had people, you know, laugh. I've had people cry. Uh, to have a, a meaningful experience, uh, an emotional experience, or even a psychological experience where people just, you know, they just connect with the place and it's relevant to their lives. And I think that's where history, the importance of history is really lies in, in, in studying our human nature and studying, um, you know, people like Ulysses S. Grant and his character and, and, and how we can maybe emulate a little bit of it in our own lives. You know, it's not just a story in a storybook. These are things, you know, the stories from time immemorial have have uh, have given us insights into how we should live, you know, whether it be a uh, Hansel and Gretel or, or or anything, you know, Aesop's fables, you know. You, you, so I think you know, I think that's where history is, you know, important and vital to our everyday lives, you know. And that's that's something I I you know really enjoy being a public historian because of that, because it's it is meaningful, yeah, it is meaningful. Absolutely, 100%. Now, we have mentioned a couple times, um, to use your phrase, our group. You've mentioned the Friends of Grant Cottage as your group. Tell me a little bit about the Friends and uh, how people could get involved in supporting the mission of Grant Cottage by supporting the Friends of Grant Cottage. Yeah, I, I, you know, right now is a very exciting time to be involved with the Friends. We are undertaking, the, the site itself has, in the last six years, um, has undergone an in incredible increase in visitation. Uh, we've had to increase our staffing, our, our volunteer staffing, our paid staffing. Um, so it's it's a it's an, a period of, of of exciting growth. We're we're actually going to be uh, we're in the midst of a couple of massive projects uh, to preserve and to operate the site. Where we're there, the state parks is working to put in a a, a solar array that's going to be large enough to power the in both buildings on the site completely mm -hmm. so completely off the grid hopefully by next spring um, and then we also have a uh, what I would almost say is probably more crucial at this point is the fire suppression system um, and that is something that uh, is is very expensive uh, but it's very necessary because if if the uh, structure was to go up, it would, it would be a total loss at this point if it was to go up in flames because we don't have <clears throat> a fire, um, fire department close enough to the site. It's, very, it's a little remote and that would, uh, that would uh, be an unfortunate loss of everything inside as well. So we know that's our number one priority is to get an actual active fire uh, 
detection and suppression system in the house. Uh, and hopefully we are, fingers crossed, getting much closer to hitting the finish line on that. Um, that's been our top preservation priority. We're also looking to extend the site. We're looking to acquire another five acres from the state uh, to uh, build a, a new, um, potentially a new pavilion for performances, 200 person pavilion. Uh, so these are all sorts of things that, you know, people can help be part of this legacy of, of, of uh, creating, uh, I should say, expanding this, this already, um, you know, important and beautiful historic site. But, you know, this is a legacy that we're going to leave to, to future generations, you know, um, and it's just, it's just so exciting when a place like this, I, the only place I can think of, and you'll probably agree with me, is, is um, I've been told by people that J Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain's home in Maine went from crickets to a million people a year after the movie Gettysburg came out. Um, you know, it's amazing what a movie can do or a documentary for that fact. So yeah, we're not going down. I mean, the books in the past, uh, the biographies on Grant in the past few years have helped, you know, increase visitation. And then on top of that, we have this documentary this year. So it's, it's just tremendous. And so we're, we're excited about the future. A lot of challenges on our plate. Um, so we, we could use any support we could get. You can make donations. Uh, you can also, um, you know, become a member and that can all be done through our website, uh, grantcottage.org. Um, so that's, uh, that's a good way to get involved. Uh, you can also, uh, if you live within the region of the site, um, you can um, become a volunteer. We have a volunteer application on there. Uh, it's a wonderful experience to take people from all over the place uh, through that house. Uh, we get people from all over the country, uh, other countries, not this year as much, uh, obviously, but, but uh, normally you get to meet all sorts of amazing people. And, um, you know, it's a great experience. Um, we've, we had one volunteer that would come up and just stay at a local that from, from another part of the state, you know, five hours away, but would come with an RV every year and, and park their RV at a campground and come and, and, and spend two weeks tour guiding. That was her two weeks. That was her vacation is to be a tour guide at Grant Cottage. So, uh, you know, uh, and we don't have as stringent, you know, regulations as uh, being a tour guide at Gettysburg. I know that uh, that's, uh, you got to jump through some hoops. You got to be like a, uh, a Civil War expert. Uh, well, I will say, um, uh, you know, because I actually went up and, and went through tour guide training at Grand Cottage one year and had a wonderful time. And uh, it was a great experience. And uh, not only kind of, you know, learning about, um, you know, how you guys tell the story, but then how you interact with the visitors and how you apply interpretive principles and public history. And it was, it was just a, a great day. I was, I was so glad I was able to, to partake in that. It was a great experience. I haven't seen you on the schedule, Chris. What's yeah, I know it's I don't have an RV to <laughs> park in the uh, the campground. I think. <laughs> no, well, I hey, I'll let you park right up there at the parking lot if you want. We'll find <laughs> for you, right next to the prison. Uh, yeah. and I will say I've been privileged to be able to give some porch talks at Grant Cottage, and uh, it's always a huge treat and to to kind of walk the floorboards of that porch and to sit in the chair that's in the spot where Grant sat. I mean, it's really a wonderful opportunity to channel history in a way that a few sites can offer. It's, it's magnificent. Yeah, people are very um, impressed by the preservation, the state of preservation of Grant Cottage is one of its interesting, most interesting features. When Grant died there in 1885, the owner of the cottage uh, Joseph Drexel, he was a friend of the Grant family who had let them stay there for the summer because of Grant's illness. He immediately told the family uh, after Grant's death that this home with all its contents, he had furnished the home just for the Grants. He had basically gotten the entire structure ready for them for, for the summer. And he decided he was gonna leave it all in place uh, as essentially a, a time capsule memorial of Grant's final days. and. Uh, it immediately started attracting visitors. Uh, within months of Grant's death, there was the public was walking through the house. Uh, the Grant family had obviously left by then, uh, but they, you know, started up the next year. Um, uh, there was a resort on the property with train service and uh, a large hotel, so it was it was certainly not too remote for people to come and see. 
and many, many veterans came there for, for many, many years to see it. But it was always kept as that time capsule. So there's original floral arrangements from the funeral. There's Grant's original medicine a bottle with the liquid still sitting in it. Uh, the, the, the original deathbed is there. The clock sits on the mantle. The original carpets are there. Everything's original furniture. Uh, so it's really a, like taking a step back into 1885. And uh, I know everybody wants to take a step back into 1865, but uh, <laughs> we can bring you to 1885. We can bring you that far. And we can bring you, you know, face to face with the uh, with the man who won the Civil War. And, uh, hopefully well, and, and you've talked about how, how, you know, yes, you get Civil War buffs, but you get a lot of presidential history buffs who come up, uh, a lot of grant buffs specifically. So it's a, an intersection of a lot of different genres of history that come up to the top of the, the mountain. Yeah, and, and, and uh, I'll tell you, uh, you get a mixture of people, all different walks, and it's wonderful. I like interacting with all of them, whether they be history buffs, and then you're, you're 20 minutes on the porch chatting them up about uh, some, some uh, you know, uh, Civil War thing or, or whatnot. Uh, but, you know, yeah, I mean, it's just, it, we get people from other countries that are just fascinated with presidential, U.S. presidential history, um, you know, Australia, uh, Canada, you know, Europe, I mean, just people from all over the place. And it's wonderful to see that kind of, you know, interest um, in other, you know, even, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's great. And um, I think one of the, probably the most surprised I was, and uh, you probably know, I, I think I um, put up a, a post on Facebook about this recently, but one of the most surprising days was a few years after I started taking tours at the cottage. Uh, I've been there seven years. And uh, there was a gentleman walked up on the porch and he looked familiar to me. I had never met this individual um, in person before, but I, it looked so familiar. And then I saw a guy that was with him and he had a Civil War shirt on. And um, I think it had his name on there, it was Ed Beers. And of course, you know, he's, he's recently passed away. Uh, but he was, you know, just an icon. And it was just amazing to have somebody who's given so many, so many tours and so much, you know, has, has given so much to the historical community over decades, uh, you know, decades of his career uh, to, to have to be in the position of giving this guy a tour. You know, it's like, you know, and, and we, we went through the, 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 the house and, you know, he was very sharp. I mean, very sharp. Um, and this was about, uh, I think it was four years ago, maybe now. Um, he had already in his 90s and he had a couple of anecdotes. Um, and I, I just, yeah, have to let him go. When he, when he goes, <laughs> gotta let him go and let him, let him, let him talk about these, these things. And um, no, but he, you know, he just filled in a couple little stories and everybody else on the tour. It was a mixed tour. It wasn't just a private tour for Fred. And then, but other people uh, thought his, uh, I, they probably didn't, they may not have recognized him like I did, but but, um, but they enjoyed the stories. And, um, you know, I think that's, you know, and that's somebody I look at and, and, and you know, look up to um, in terms of public history. You know, I mean, he was the one who really championed, you know, taking people through these places, you know, giving them, an, you know, show, showing them a little bit more than just pointing at artifacts or, you know, walkthroughs, oh, just open the door and walk through this house. And if you see something interesting, maybe you can ask a question. No, he was the guy who said, you got to get out of the textbooks, get on the battlefield and, uh, you know, experiences. And that's what I feel like Grant Cottage does. Obviously, we didn't have a battle in Grant Cottage, uh, but, but, but not, not in your typical sense. Uh, but uh, but you definitely do get that experience, that similar experience to standing on a battlefield where you're like, this is where it happened right here. And it gives you that feeling that you're, 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 you're right there in the middle of history. Um, and it's a visceral experience. So we're, you know, we're, um, you know, we're excited to be able to provide that to people. So in the comment section below, I will post some links so that people can access Grant Cottage, uh, grantcottage.org, as well as some of the videos that you've, uh, you've mentioned. Uh, I was fortunate um, earlier this autumn to take part in a panel discussion with Ben and, and talk about the literary legacy of Grant and, and his memoirs. So uh, I'll be sure to post a link to that as well. But uh, uh, Ben, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. And congratulations again on the National Landmark designation. 
Yes, uh, we're, we're, you know, I think we're going to have a big party next spring. We're going to kind of bring it all together and we've got more, more exhibits going into our new exhibit room. We're going to have uh, one of the most exciting things is bringing Grant's clothing home. Uh, Grant's clothing has been in uh, storage. Uh, some of his clothing that he wore at the cottage has been in storage in a facility near Albany, New York. And we've worked with the conservators to, um, to get that back by spring. We're, we're gonna have a, a three-piece suit in the first room is the plan. Uh, Grant's suit that he wore sitting in the chair is, is still there and we're gonna put that on display in the first room. And then we're gonna take and put his private uh, clothing uh, that he wore when he was, you know, his, his bed clothing is gonna be put on uh, a mannequin in the second room. So it's, it's really gonna be a wonderful interpretive boost to what's already a great, uh, you know, a great, um, you know, interpretive experience. Um, when I found out that clothing a couple of years ago existed, I, 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 in the collection, I said, we have got to get that back. People have to see that, you know, and, and I, little did I know there was two full suits. It was amazing. So we, we can rotate the suits uh, after a few years. So it's just, it's just wonderful when you find these treasures and then you can bring them home. And uh, that's one of the things our organization does as well. So we look forward to the spring. We look forward to uh, making the formal announcement for national landmark status. And we look forward to, you know, people coming in, in, and visiting. Um, we do close November 1st this year. We're open Fridays through Sundays for the next three weeks. So if you're anywhere close enough and you're not on the naughty list of, of states, uh, <laughs> Anyway, I know I can't come. I'm I was going to say, Chris, you can't even come up, uh, you know, unfortunately, but, uh, but yeah, so hopefully we'll be beyond that by, by spring, we'll be doing a lot better. And, and, and um, we look forward to having a lot, a, a lot more folks come through next year and, um, and experience this, uh, the special site. And um, wonderful, wonderful. Well, please give my regards to, to everybody up there and my thanks for all the great work that you guys do there at Grant Cottage, Ben. Certainly. Thanks so much, Chris. I, I appreciate everything you do to, to uh, promote the place. And, uh, and I appreciate you helping us get another order, your, order of your books in. <laughs> gift shop. I appreciate that too. <laughs> <laughs> we just have to get you to sign them. That's, they sell better when they're signed, you know. So, uh, ben fine, Kemp, Operations Manager of Grand Cottage, thanks so much for being with us. I'm Chris Mikowski for Emerging Civil War. We'll see you online at Grand Cottage and on the battlefield.